Welcome to Cork in the North, another episode this week, ladies and gentlemen. Before we crack on to it, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, the Dying Pub on the Lisburn Road. They've been sponsoring us now all year. They're a great place to go for food, a place to go for drink, a place to park your car, a place to use the toilet. You can hire the venue out for weddings, funerals, christenings, communions, 21st, 50th, 40th, 30th, you name it, you can do it. Where? In the Doyen Pub, the Lisburn Road. If you use the code CORK25, you get 25% off your food Wednesday to Saturday. They're only open Wednesday to Sunday, but you get discount off your food Wednesday to Saturday with CORK25. We go down there to do the live pod uh, in September, which is nearly sold out. Get your tickets on the link below, okay? Log into the Doyen website on the link below. Go and visit them. Take someone out. Go there for a date. It's a great place to go. A great place to go and have a pint if you're on your way into town. You can go down there on a Thursday night. Just have a bit of dinner out. You don't want to cook. Bring someone down there. The Doyen Pub, the Lisburn Road. We're fans of them and they're fans of us. Now, this week, joining me is Jasmine Sierra. I know now. I keep saying Yaz. You'll notice why. And I I did apologise. And the wonderful Dave Elliott as well. We talked to them. It was great crack. It took a twist halfway through. It was a bit mad. We had brilliant fun. I hope you enjoy the episode with these two people. Did you go to Belfast Pride? No, I had a gig. I went down. Was it good? It was class. Yeah. It was a great old day. Yeah. Yeah. Were, were you proud? I was very proud. Good. Yeah. Uh, back in Connor, who uh, I make podcasts for, we're leading the parade. So they have a, an organization called Show Some Love. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They're cool. Just some love, not a lot of love. Yeah. Not too <laughs> much <some> love. <laughs> just, hey, I just wish you some love. Yeah. They just Keep edge their love. Just yeah. touch me on my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> like touch, just touch my elbow. Like a traditional father. They yeah, just, just, nobody yeah. ever says. I remember once my dad, my dad has 12 brothers and sisters. So imagine his mother. Well, they show a lot of love. Right. <laughs> yeah. But he turned around to his mother and said, uh, do you love me, mum? And she said, I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> because she had so many kids, she oh, barely knew any of them. She must have been having a tough day that day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I know. So yeah. Dave Elliott, Yasmin, Sierra, how are we, how are we doing anyway? Okay. Every time. Yeah. Every t- for yeah. a whole year. Yeah. <laughs> for a whole year. Oh, Jasmine, Sierra, sorry. I was going to say, it's a wise Christ. start. Whoa. No. My whole life, do you know what? I work with someone no, called you know, Yaz. You know what it is? I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm wrong. Oh. I, <laughs> it takes a better person I'll to admit that. It, you yeah. know, I'll go yeah. get changed. You know what? Your visa to stay in this country <laughs> is currently being reviewed. So, if anything, you need to start agreeing with us about stuff. Okay? <laughs> My visa is going to be under Jasmine Sierra. Yeah. So Jasmine, I apologize. You've been apologizing for a year and now it doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> what, the apology <laughs> or the fact that I call you Yaz? <laughs> I work with someone called Yaz. Oh, that's crazy. And I, when I see the but same name. Doesn't matter. I work with someone named John. <laughs> 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 like, can I ask you a question? And no. I and I want to ask you this. I want to, I want to, this is me. coming from a, a good faith and an honest capacity. Okay. Do you, did that annoy you, me getting your name mixed up there? I apologize, but did no, that annoy you? you see, you know what it is? I grew up brown in America. I'm used to racism. So That's not racism. <laughs> what? I, that was not racism. You know. That was just me not pronouncing some letters right. names are hard, and it's the yeah. browner names that are hard. No. But also, oh, right? Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> the four-letter word that's also one of the most well-known musics in the world. Difficult. Jazz. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. I, yeah. That's how I'll do it now, jazz. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's call you jazz. Are jazz you music. Kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> <laughs> that's all it took. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that a year ago? <laughs> and I would have nailed it. So if anything, this is your fault because you're coming over here to Ireland and we have difficulty like with, with words and you can't, you, you need to start making things easier for us to accept you into the community. I got to assimilate to the culture. Yeah. You have to assimilate to the culture. Yeah. Do you know, like some people in Northern Ireland come up to me and say, especially in Q Radio, and they say to me, Andrew, can you can I just check some Irish words with you there because I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm like, what's Dahi? What's that? I was Dahi is David and, you know, all this, all this kind of of stuff that to do and, and I'm saying listen they've come to me going listen I can't pronounce your, your culture now listen I, I did very bad in Irish in school but I know how to pronounce words but I, I don't Just know how to name. fluently do them yeah. but <laughs> jazz it is a hard one though it is, anyway, it is yeah, cool. well I want an Irish name for when I become a citizen I want like a Dervla. Yazish. 
Dervla. 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 She sounds hefty. I want like a... <laughs> Ford. Ford. Ford Sierra. Ford. <laughs> ja- jazz music in, in Irish is snag, y'all. So you could just oh, be called snag. Oh, snag. Snag doesn't sound like a no, sweet name. Either. Just snag Snag's name. trouble. <laughs> now, uh, for those listening and watching, Jasmine... <laughs> has submitted her visa request. Is it for permanent residency here? So it's, how? What's happened? It's for uh, ancestry. So, whoa, 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 you've you've ancestors. We're not going there because I know what you're going to do. You're going to divide, and I'm not going to join and conquer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so explain the ancestry. My, um, I'm half Bermudan. That's nothing to do with here. It it is. Oh. Lurgan have something to do with okay. that, huh? So that makes me, so I have a parent and a grandparent who were born in Bermuda. and it was, Commonwealth. It's the Commonwealth. We talked, we mentioned this before. So I was, I was waiting for one more so, so I can make a Bermuda Triangle joke. And, <laughs> and you know, people go missing in the Bermuda Triangle and people also go missing in Northern Ireland. Oh. Yeah, wow. Oh. Do you get to do like... Northern Ireland should be twinned with the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make that happen. Things go missing. Ew. Whoa. You no. Know, that's mad. I'm trying to think of show names, but the, the Bermuda disappeared doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't the, sound good. The Bermuda Six. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dave, would you accept jazz into the country? Would I? Of course. I like have, if you were yes. the person processing the claim for Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't even need paperwork. I'd be like, listen, come on. You're grand. <laughs> so can I ask you the process? So you, because yeah. I know there was a bit of fundraising done for you, which yes. obviously oh. brilliant. I wasn't available on the night to perform. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I'm not really you supporting that sort of activity anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I even need to cut numbers, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Yeah. Uh, we got rid of Aaron McCann, so we should be able to do a bit of a trade. Mm-hmm. Right. So one out, one in. It's like a doorman. Yeah. Oh, that would actually be quite a fun experiment. That would. Like doing a couple of trades. Who like who would be some comedians? Who Bosman transfers. Do yeah, some just a couple of Bosman. Yeah. Um, Jazz. So you have been raising money to pay. Can I ask you how much do you? How much is it? If you don't mind me asking, because it's online, so, I imagine. Well, yes. So the application itself is, I think it's you're paying more so the NHS fee, which is like three and a half grand, and then the application's like nearly a grand, and then you need to have X amount in your account to prove. That like you can not have a job for three months of living here, but like it has to be a number. It's like it's, it's like about five grand, six grand. So hold on, those guys are encouraging people not to work. Well, no, I think it, it's Goodness because me. they're scared you're going to come and try to get like assistance, the government mm-hmm. assistance. So basically, what they're saying is, you show us be, that you won't need. So you need assistance. about ten grand. Okay, so you've submitted everything. Ah. Absolutely brilliant. Did you have to do an interview? Um, I will, so they'll they'll send it to me. But can we come here? <laughs> oh, I no. want to stay. <laughs> we'll all turn up with like "Make America Great Again" hats, or or "Make Belfast Great Again." No. you know, like to support you. <laughs> oh, no, it's just to do my biometrics, and then they'll be like, "Are you criminal?" And I'm like, "No." And um, don't have banter in no. that moment because the temptation would be to go maybe. <laughs> if you don't sign off my form, I might turn a bit criminal. Yeah, but you're, okay. co- you're, you, you just say, look, I'm here because I'm a comedian and I'm part of this in the industry. The comedy industry in the UK, even though we're in Ireland, blah, 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 is worth one billion. It's a report has been released on Charles. So bring that in and say, look, I'm in an industry that's worth one billion to the economy. I have money in the account. I know what I'm doing. Here's what I'm working as. Here's where I'm living. Here's my charity work, blah, blah, blah. And then bring in me or James McKegney and go, look, that's a future husband. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I think you would be. I think you would get nervous. You'd feel like you're doing something bad. You'd feel like you're having to. You'd be like, you'd be really like good. Some shady I've known guy. Yaz for years. <laughs> 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 Who the hell is Yaz? Oh, what's your name again? Jasmine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my Julie just kick in the door, going, "What's going on here?" I'm like, "Babe, it's for paperwork. It's for paperwork." <laughs> my penis just slipped into her. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't mean to why, ask. Why are you doing that? You say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean Let's to say that. Let's get it going. Earth uh, lady kids. <laughs> uh, Dave, can you imagine? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what a segue! <laughs> <laughs> Dave, could you imagine? <sighs> Dave, would you ever like to be an immigration officer? <laughs> <laughs> no, be the, the power. Oh, but you'd be the so power. stressful. I feel I I let I let I let them all in. Yeah, I'd say come on in, guys. I feel you too good, bad. Like, well, you see if someone's in front of you and they're like, please, 
<laughs> like, have you seen uh, Puss in Boots and Shrek? Yeah. When he Aww. does the wee eyes, I'd be like, come on, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, can I get out early and go... Antonio Banderas? Yes, Antonio yeah. Banderas. Have, have, you, have you ever been stopped by customs in an airport? Have you ever had issues <laughs> with, like, you know, people pulling you to one side and stuff? I was late for a flight once out of Southampton Airport, which is the size of this room. And oh, I was sitting in my mate's apartment being like, well, he's like, what time's your flight? He's like, I don't know. And look, and it was in, like, 15 minutes. I like, go, oh, shit. So I, he had to really rush me to get there and I had to go and be like, look, I'm really going to miss this flight. And, like, we'll give you the wee quick like pass to get through everything really quickly. So I went through and then I take my belt off to get, you know, through yeah. the the scanners. And then the guy was taking a lot of time, yeah. like looking through my stuff. So I went across the line to be like, just give me that belt. And they're like, get back, get back. And I said, no, I just need my belt, get back. And I was like touching my trousers and all. So I don't know what he thought I was going to do, but they were like, I said, no. and I thought, oh, I'm in trouble there. I thought I was going to get looked, my butt looked up, which is a weird go-to, isn't it? Like yeah. you crossed the line. I've got your belt. Show me up your ass. There's something shady going on there. And they were all, yeah. were there, did you make the flight? Yeah, but I was very sweaty, so I, I probably looked like I was on gear. I was like, give me my belt to take another hit. Yeah. The fattest heroin addict in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get on You just here. start off because I've just started yeah. the process, the yeah. program, the heroin program. Yeah, Jasmine, yeah. what about you? Well, it's, I come from America, so obviously they're, the, the airplane's the airplanes, the, the security there is insane. What's it called? So TM, TMZ? TSA. TSA. So oh, TMZ? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, TM, TMZ is a TV World show, isn't it? <laughs> no. So then me and my friend Brona, we went to Liverpool to do... Um, hot water? Uh, yes, we went to go do hot water. And when we were getting on the flight, I forgot that my phone was in my pocket. And so oh, no. the alarm went off. So I immediately went like this. And everyone's like, why is Is that the natural American I no guns? Like, like, don't shoot. I'm not a criminal. I'm like, I come in peace. And everyone was laughing at me because <laughs> they were like, dude, like, just take Chill. your phone out of your pocket. <laughs> and I was like, all right, okay. It's, so. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's strange to think that that's your first I instinct. You have to show, like, I'm not dangerous. I yeah, but here, it's like you walk through, you're like, don't oh, Jesus, do I have something in me? You need me pocket. You yeah. know, you're like, just didn't know. Whereas over, where you, our mentality is like, it got buzzed, oh, I'm going to get a feel. Yeah. <laughs> right? Whereas you were like, don't shoot! <laughs> like, to see the difference in the culture there. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm trying to move here, dog. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you staying, anyway? Um, have you met the people that we do live with? I think they're all great. Yeah. And I love the culture, and I love, you know, just what I've been able to build for myself here. So it's like And you're and you're and you're very welcome and like you must feel the support when people doing the fundraising to oh help God. you and stuff I just like kept that. Must disappearing be. and drinking and crying. Like I yeah. would just find a corner. Would that kind of stuff happen in the Dave, did you perform at any of the fundraisers? He did. He yes. Said I, he in a MAGA hat? <laughs> yeah. I did, yeah. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. In a MAGA hat. I got uh, my whole MAGA scenario is quite uh, awkward now because I went to America on holidays just before the, the election Hillary and Trump oh. and thought in my head there's no way Trump's ever winning this. This will be worth a few quid down the line. So in the airport, I bought a, a Biden uh, or a Trump and uh, Pence mug, yeah. which is, by the way, the best mug that I have for keeping coffee warm. But that, and I bought a MAGA hat, and I thought I'd use this in sketches, and he won, and now I'm bald and look like this. So I just look like the most racist guy in the whole universe. Really? My coffee. <laughs> He's coming day. back. When he got He's shot, coming back. my grandma called me. And she was just like in pure devastation that yeah. Trump had been shot. She's <laughs> crying. She's saying all this stuff. She's like, I can't believe it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Grandma, say it in English. Like, What's going on here? But your granny's a big Trump fan, you told me. Yeah. That's, yeah. What's the. So your grandmother loves Trump? She's assimilated to America. And can I ask you a question? I do not. Can you reason with her like does like did they like so they released a thing uh, from his 2016 to 2020 he told 32,000 lies. Mm. He told 19 lies a day, apparently. Well, my grandma's a small business owner. Something like that, so yeah. 13,000 lies. Oh, I don't know what it was. Something like that, anyway. Yeah. But isn't he, like, a super, I don't know the right term, obviously he's a Republican, Racist. but isn't he, like, a super loyalist to just America only? Like, anybody comes in, he's like, nah, we're American. But his ties um, are made in China. Made all Trump American. ties. China. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, do you think he's just, like, so I've heard some American people be like, well, for us, like, money-wise, he was all right. You know, he doesn't really interfere in other countries that much, apart from when he took out Abu Bakr <laughs> with... Uh, Dead like a dog. Yeah, I was, that's one of the greatest... Dirty dog. ...split ups ever, those two. Can I just say, dogs. I just think... I Sorry to interrupt you, but I just, I, I'm very disappointed in America. 
<laughs> just just Sorry. a bit of feedback. Just a bit of feedback. Yeah. Just a bit of feedback. I thought we'd done him. It was gonna be a lose lose regardless. No, but like I thought like I thought we'd done it. We'd done the whole Trump era thing, you know what I mean? The mm, populism. Yeah. But now it seems to be even more like but I don't know, like I just think like I, I I was listening to a podcast last night, like, and I think I don't think, you know, Joe Biden, whatever, but you know, I I, I do believe Joe Biden could have done a hell of a lot more for Palestine and could have could have done more. I think he's. I think it, it, what it, his stance over Israel Palestine has been horrendous. Yeah. You know. So, but mm. but now you got like Kamala Harris yeah. and Trump. No, you're not fan. I like. I like. What do you think of Kamala? Style. You like putting she everyone, puts in prison. everyone in prison. She puts yeah. Everyone in prison. <laughs> Say that again. She has put. I think she has like holds a record for putting the most <laughs> black men in prison. Oh, imagine she was doing your like visa. I know. She prison. Like, Send her out. Yeah. So is she quite tough going. Wasn't she a police? Something officer. like that. Yeah. Police prosecutor or something like that. She's a penal queen. Right. So do you think like does she's got a chance? What's the vibe in America? What are you, what are you getting off your family? Like what did your granny say? All my Kamala? family will vote for Trump. They really? Will. Yeah. And what do they what do they kind of like what do they kind of like say about it like do they think oh no he's dead right with what he's saying like I, I don't know I just find it's more it really to do with like just finances do you, do you, yeah just so it's money right but you know I was listening to the Joe Brawley yeah, free state podcast and with Dion Fanning and he said that uh, Trump made a statement and he said he was going to bring back cement I'm bringing <laughs> cement back where did it go yeah <laughs> where's the cement like he's going to bring back cement like what does that mean like I don't understand but see, to me, Trump is like the most entertaining guy ever, but he shouldn't be in politics. Like he should be on late night chat shows making me laugh. You know, he roasts 100%. people, stuff, he, but he shouldn't be able to control people's he's a, like, like he's a, lives. He's a, he's a smart operator in terms of the way he, he he's a bully. Like Oh, completely. Is but he he's a bully or is he a boss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you fucking, I'm having that visa cancelled. Did, yeah. did you guys have that show? That well, show that he did where it was like... Um, oh, The Apprentice? Was the Apprentice? Yeah. yeah was what was he like? What was that good? Was he good in it? Or like, I don't know. I don't know. See, I don't... We had a little sugar over here. Omarosa? Nothing? The what? <laughs> Omarosa? <laughs> Who's Omarosa? Ugh. She was... A wee she, girl called Roma from Tyrone. She was like on there. She was just like this crazy like Republican black girl who like... Like you're Republican or our Republican? <laughs> Okay, cool. So, what was she doing on it? Was she a oh, contestant? She, yeah, she was a contestant. And, and like, Trump liked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I think she won. If I remember. What's she doing now? Like director of communications for his campaign or something? No, now she just like lives off of that that, that <laughs> hype from the show. Yeah, yeah. How did you feel when he was tried to be shot? <laughs> like, because I don't think oh, you should well. kill him. Like. This is part of your. This is part of your visa. America, I'm just getting you careful. ready for your Irish embassy interview. <laughs> Who was it? I think I was talking to Aaron McCann at the time, and I was like, I was saying something like, "Oh, just tell me what you think about this." And he's like, "Trump has been shot," and I was like, "I don't know what that means." And he's like, yeah. "No, Trump is." No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't shot. shoot him. Like, you know what I mean? If you disagree with him, like, but it'd be, I, I find it like, imagine if we got one here. We got like a Trump-like figure here, like serious. Well, you know, have you ever heard of the are. Reverend Ian Paisley? Who would I? He did, was kicking around here for like sixty years. That dude. So was he? Was he like him? Oh, I yeah, yeah. Paisley. Um, sure. Don't forget, like back in the day, he had a full campaign. It was probably a better slogan than "Make America Great Again." It was "Save Ulster from Sodomy." Get that in a hat. <laughs> Save <laughs> Ulster from Sodomy. Yeah. Get the, can you look that up? What exactly the Save Ulster from Sodomy campaign did? I mean, think of very much. Does what it says in the tin, but I don't understand the policing procedure around trying to catch sodomy. And I don't know. Just... Even Baker catchphrase, no surrender. Yeah, to sodomy. <laughs> but <That's... it's>, it, <laughs> it seems to be those slogans always, you know, were, were created in the 60s and 70s. But mm -hmm. now those slogans are just the most important thing now of yeah. a campaign, isn't it? What you would know? your slogan be? Well, oh. um, my, geez, if I had a slogan, now mine would be like, we'll give it, we'll, no, we'll not give it a go. We'll, we'll give, give it a go. It a like, go. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Like, yeah, we'll give it a go. Because I genuinely want to run for election. Oh, no. Yeah? I, I've, I've talked about this before, haven't I, Sean? Yeah. yeah. I would actually, we're going to run in North Down as an independent. It's three and a half grand deposit to put down. Oh. going to have a fundraising gig. Oh, there no. you go. <laughs> you I, I can't make it. And I actually think if we got the whole comedy community, you can't make it work because you'll be back living in America. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was funny. 
That was funny. <laughs> Would you campaign for me in North Down? Oh uh, well, you need you need if a I ran for hour. election, yeah. <laughs> but it depends on what your policies are in my constituency. World peace. I don't care about that. I care about as uh, as as that was said last election, as Tim Collins said, potholes and and bushes. Yeah, That's what I care about. He was uh, yeah. he goes. People in North Down are only, are not are only interested in potholes and bushes. They're not interested in wars and interest, and yeah. interest rates. I'm going. That's what local politics is. Yeah, you know but then, I mean? but his point, which is fair, was he, they were being elected for to be MPs and go to Westminster, so they wouldn't be dealing with the the sort of constituency issues that would be dealt with. That's like, the guy that had the Rolls constantly. Royce and made a bit of a mistake yeah. with the Rolls. What did he say? No, he just he lives in England and drives the Rolls Royce, and he was just trying to be like relate to people on that level. Oh, did he like say that. like, oh, cost of living's really hard yeah. and uh, the, the cost to service my Rolls Royce? Yeah. Oh, that's really going to relate to. But you know what, in North Down. Could there's yeah. not? I've not yeah. seen one Rolls Royce in North Down. The ballers and rollers, and you play golf as well. If you go to Royal Belfast, poof. I, I can't. The golf get in cart. There. They actually the the golf carts are Rolls Royces. I I once emailed Royal Belfast Golf Club about membership, and I think they laughed at me. Yeah. <laughs> like they laughed. Well, like they replied, but you could see them. them they were like, "See you later, man." Email them now and see, because you know what? This is the thing I'm not good at in this kind of comedy world is you know trying to get freebies. I'm trying to get hookups. I'm not trying to get freebie. People, I'm trying to get a membership to pay. Like, By the way, this is A-Rai from Q Radio. Hit them <laughs> with a lot of letters A-Rai. that confuses them. Yeah, <laughs> And then be like, listen, would you like me to represent your club? Yeah, yeah, if when, you want, I'll be an ambassador. The application? When did you try and... No, you have to be recommended. It's all judges but, but and when, lawyers, when apparently. Was this that the I, when I originally moved over here, I wanted to join a golf club that was near my house. <laughs> so I emailed Royal Belfast. <laughs> What? Royal Belfast. See, when I didn't know. That's like being like, oh, you know, I'm looking for um, a residency in London. Could I maybe inquire about uh, apartments in Buckingham Palace? You know, it's like, it's fucking (laughs) ridiculous. So I thought, like, I just emailed the nearest course. There was a couple of them near me, and I emailed. Hollywood's closer than you. You Yeah, well, I can walk to Hollywood golf course. Like, But my point was, (laughs) I thought, oh, Royal Belfast went on the website, oldest golf course. In yeah. Ireland, I thought I'll email them. I was like, hey, I'm just inquiring about membership, like, and then they were just. I think. They, I think the reply they just was like, lol. Uh, <laughs> the reply was like, oh, it's. I don't know. I can't remember what they said, but they were actually quite nice about it. But they were like, oh, it's, you have to be recommended, blah blah. By blah. the stonemasons, you're going. Yeah, in, like, and like, and I don't have. Stuff. I don't have anybody that's a judge or a lawyer that could get me in. Uh, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, you have to go and do an interview. I think I imagine. And as, stuff. as he says now. Nah. Big guy from Q Radio. Yeah. You just turn up at the door and they're like, oh, Andrew, do you want to play a few holes? And you're like, big mistake. Huge. Yeah, yeah huge mistake. I'm going yeah. to I'm going to Helen's Bay nine hole course golf course <laughs> yeah. instead. That's gonna, a 12 pound around. Blackwood, I was actually Helen's With Bay. With no practice facilities. Helen's Bay golf course yesterday for lunch. A big carvery. Delicious. Was it good? Oh, I, That's a lovely view. Beautiful view. What's yeah. carvery? Oh. Carvery's where they just bring... You don't know what a carvery is. Oh. Explain. A carvery <laughs> is... It is. It, it's a. It's a Britain, British and Irish institution. Of carvery. Okay. It's you go. It's almost. It's a wee bit like. A, what would you say? It's a buffet. It yeah. So what you do buffet. is there's a place in England. There's a place in England called Toby Carvery, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. It's not a guy's just name. And you go in and you pay say fifteen quid, sixteen quid, and you get a carvery. So what happens is you get a way, table. Jas still doesn't know what a carvery. Is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So what you do is you go in, you get a table, mm-hmm. and you go in and you do that classic. You know that classic thing is. You know, you go for your buffet or breakfast, you sit down, you wait a second and you get up. Yeah. Right? Mm. And you have to leave like a phone on the table to let people know that it's like leaving your scent. Like you leave your scent, right? So you go up then, you get a tray and a plate, you get a tray and a plate and it's a big kind of buffet and there's, and you get your, you start off, you go, you get chicken, ham or beef and there's mm-hmm. someone there cutting it and you and they put the beef on. Then they give you the potatoes, the veg, the stuffing, yeah. the Yorkshire puddings or whatever and you fill it all up. Ah. And then you sit down and you eat it, and you can go up for seconds. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's carvery, a it's a buffet. Yeah, but the, the the meat is the main attraction. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like but they right. they carve that, and all the and stuff is under a knife. heat lamps. And, and you can stuff. you can get the rest yourself. You can <laughs> self serve. <laughs> so it's a buffet. Yeah, but you can you can self serve everything else, but not the meat. But not the that's meat. carved. So that's it's a carver. restricted buffet. Yeah. yeah, the meat's carved. That's why it's called the carvery. Like, yeah. a lot of this. Yeah, but it was that was the awkward conversation the, yesterday. The guy gave me the offer or the option of beef or pork, and I was like, it's Sunday, double up. That's some both. This is double up, yeah. And it's some duck as well. I said no to duck. Oh, and said no to I fish. love that. But yeah, it was good. good. Big uh, Yorkshire puddings. 
Nice. I couldn't believe this, right? I was in Dublin on Saturday doing the Ivy Gardens and um, Julie and I went uh, out, say, 12 o'clock, half 12. We were heading back to the hotel and we said, oh, I wouldn't mind cheesy chips now. You know, I wouldn't mind mm -hmm. a bit of dirt food, right? <laughs> so we went to... <laughs> you know, just a bit of dirt food, like, Ooh. before the sex. Oh, and uh, nothing turns him on more than garlic breath. Whoa. There was no sex. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Julie. <laughs> 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 Do you know when you like get into the hotel? When you get into a hotel room, you become the most corrupt man ever. Like you, know what I mean? like you walk in and go, "Oh Jesus Christ!" The name. Anyway, right? <laughs> you walk in. Like, this bed is going to see action. <laughs> it's was mostly sleeping. So we went into Eddie Rockets, and I walked in. What? What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? <laughs> You go from like four <laughs> bedrooms, so what's four plate Eddie Rockets? <laughs> <laughs> so we went into Eddie Rockets, uh, take the, the restaurant, right? Carvery. <laughs> into Eddie Rockets, right? We walked into Eddie Rockets, right, in Dublin. How was it going? And we walked in, and there's fifth security, you know, in the takeaways now, right? <laughs> So I walked in and I go, can I get takeaway? <laughs> what? It's just mental security and takeaway stuff. Oh. I just walked in and went, can I, can I get takeaway? <laughs> in, a, in a takeaway. I don't know why I asked them, right? And he went, yeah, 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 join the queue. And I went, oh, here we go. So I went up. And I says to the girl, I says, give me two cheesy, dirty garlic. <laughs> give me two cheesy chips, you dirty bit. <laughs> I said, hey, give me... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it turns into Sean Paul. On the river. Yeah, give me the chips. <laughs> I said, me show me your body on the <laughs> chips. <Yeah. laughs> me give you the mayonnaise. <laughs> oh. So I, I said, can I have the two cheesy garlicky chippies, right? <laughs> <laughs> right so you're mad. Yeah. Oh. So the woman... <laughs> And the woman oh. goes, do you want a drink? And I oh. says, only oh, lilt for me again. <laughs> <laughs> totally tropical taste, man. <laughs> lilt was good in the day, wasn't it? <laughs> so I, so the, the woman says to me, do you want a drink? And I said, I'll have a, I'll have a, I'll have a Coke Zero. She goes, we've only got Diet Coke. I said, it's a need. I said, I'll ma it's fine. <laughs> They give us the they give us the receipt. It was twenty five euro, right? Now, I looked at the receipt because that that's who I am, right? Yeah. They charged me for a Fanta and a Coke, and I went back and I went, I went back and I went, hey, I says come here. I'm only getting one drink. What? <laughs> I said, me got the problem, Pondy. <laughs> I had no Fanta. <laughs> right? So I am. Um, I says, come here. There's no Fanta here. Right? I was like, I was like, did you hear the word Fanta come out of my mouth there when I was ordering it? I said, I said, she goes, oh, I'm very sorry. I said, you take that Fanta off there now. And then I turned around to Julie and I went, do you actually want a Fanta? And she was like, no, I'll have no Fanta. So she took the Fanta out, right? She took the Fanta out of the, the, the thing. Would you believe this? They charge you €2.95 Euro cent or something for nighttime food as a tax in Dublin. Nighttime economy food or something. Wow. Here you go. I mean, I can't believe that because yeah, it's not that startling, I don't think. Because it's like... <laughs> Oh Is that a thing? Well, they have to pay the, the doorstep oh somehow. You know? Is that a thing? <laughs> what? Just, you can save 10 minutes because <laughs> you know they charge two two ninety five <laughs> for a VAT charge. It's a security man. Yeah. <laughs> the security man has no relevance. I'm just telling the story, Jasmine. <laughs> they have to pay the security man. But I'm not paying the, him. The, that's what the two pound goes to. Does it? Yeah. yeah. I didn't have any voice in hiring him. 
They have to because mm-hmm. crazy people like you are coming in late at night. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I, was, I did not get the fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't order fun. But I have a feeling. Calling them dirty. I people. have a feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling. I have a feeling they're adding in the odd drink <laughs> to the drunk Just people. To try to, yeah, yeah. They're adding in the odd drink to the drunk people. But not you. Because when I used to work in a hotel, you know, you know what you used to do? Oh. A little tip for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. If you're getting married and you're putting, say, a, a 500 quid on the bar, and then that's the credit and it runs out people. You know, you go, look, uh-huh. we've put 500 quid on the barrel. When the 500 quid is up, it goes back to everybody paying. Yeah. When I used to work in a bar when I was 16, someone come and go, two pints of Guinness and a gin and tonic. You'd put three pints of Guinness and a gin and tonic and you'd a little, little cheeky Guinness for yourself. Oh. Well, I regret it. It's that's karma. Deceitful. This is karma coming yeah, for you. Exactly. But I was 16 and my the guy showed me to do it. I think we did it. Like We just we just had a treat for ourselves. Like, yeah. But see, nowadays, not cool, really, like. 500 quid to get two rounds. Of two hundred and fifty pound each yeah. around, yeah, Jeez. unbelievable. So, um, oh, them just still laugh. Look at him and imagine <laughs> him speaking like that to somebody. Oh. <laughs> it's a wee hollow, and you're like, wee, you're like a child, <laughs> and then you're going in, yo, dirty bitch, give me the chips. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it's a good too- voice, that isn't it? The yeah. Jamaican, I yeah, love the Jamaican. Much your accent. <laughs> what? That that Cork accent sounds Jamaican. There's a lot of Cork Jamaicans knocking about. Yeah. And do you know? Do you know? Do you know? What? It's just such a funny sentence. <laughs> like you say, it like oh, it's known fast. It's not Cork Jamaicans, you know. And you know, there's a lot of Irish. Uh, I'm a descendant from Argentina. <laughs> Well, I mean, you've got the blonde Irish hair, Latina? I can see. I'm Argentinian. Oh, if you... Go, <laughs> if you if, do you know... <laughs> no, listen the Irish to me. Latina? No, listen to me. My uncle, Kevin. Ryan the from, well-known Argentinian. The <laughs> no, true fact. True fact. What? This is a true <laughs> fact. Jasmine, yeah, yeah, Jasmine, listen, right? This is a true fact. On my mother's side, I am linked... I am in the chain of the French royal family. Right. Right. So I'm French royalty, right? <laughs> but on my dad's side, I'm Argentinian. Oh. But I am. That, so I'm a, I have a mixture of South America. I'm French and a ha- I'm half. I'm. I don't know where I am, but I'm like nine, nine. I'm like nine thousand in the throne or something. Nine thousand to the throne. Mm. In do, France? Do France, do France have a king? No. Nope. Well, that's gone then. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's all fucked. So I'm Argentinian and French. Wow. So there you go now. So you're mixed. Right? Where would your ancestries be? I'd say you're very Scottish. Looking. I'd say just yeah. I don't. I, I'm scared to do it, just in case that's boring. Uh-huh. And it's a waste of money. Well, you come fucking... back like ninety nine point nine percent banger. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd love that, but I just would. I think it'd be that's a waste a of money. Show, yeah, ninety nine point nine percent. But they they pull places out because everybody originates somewhere, don't they? Yeah. So like they'll pull a wee bit of them around and be like, oh, you've a 0.1% Pakistan. I'd be like, wow. And then I go to Pakistan trying to find guys like me and be disappointed. Yeah, it's I mean, a tennis you, thing. If you told me you were Puerto Rican, I'd believe you. Nice. I like you, have a very, you have a very distinct look, Dave. I mean, do I? I think it's very much UDA. I think it's the look that I kind of have. UDA, but reintegrating. Yes, that's that's fair. To the you know what? I'm a bit like a fat pit bull. You know, no, you're, 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 fat old daddy. You're the North Down bad bunny. <laughs> North Down bad bunny. A North Down fat show. I can take that one. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, you know what? Because um, I, I don't know, my mum's side or... See, because I'm a mix, mix marriage. On my mum's side. Say it again. I'm a mixed marriage. You're in a mixed Same. marriage. Yeah, so... Oh, no, I'm not in a mixed marriage. No, I'm... You're the child of a mixed marriage. I'm a child of a mixed marriage, so, you know, just half cross myself. Um... But uh, my yeah. Can I ask you a question? Is it yeah. St. Stephen's Day or Boxing Day? Yeah, it's Boxing Day. Yeah, Ooh, I think. we know which half you lean towards. Yeah, but you know what? They give me Premier League stickers and Mars bars on a Sunday to go to church with them. And my, do you actually did, do you go to church? They did not. Yeah, because my mum and dad wanted rid of me on a Sunday morning, and the High Street Presbyterian in Hollywood was just stone throw. Place house. to go, like. Yeah, I didn't like it though. Wasn't a big fan of. When was the last time you were actually in church? To, to celebrate the life of one of my relatives who died, I think it was the last time. I was in oh, was that a Presbyterian funeral? No, no, no. They don't really. Have, they're no fun. They, Humanist. They just, okay. they just, they just go to Roselawn. The projects go to Roselawn and incinerate you. You know, you get to go to the last time. I think was my, um, yeah, it would have been my aunt Peggy's funeral. It was in a chapel, and there was a guy there. Where the Undertaker was not what you would say was a really well able bodied guy, and I was worried that he had a long way to push. 
the coffin on the wee trolley from the chapel, like down this wee windy. She said, hey, if you let it go, like, yeah, I went and down. I thought, he's got a struggle, and he did struggle, and, I, and he nearly fell into the grave, like, oh. lowering her down and stuff. So I had to help him, and then I nearly fell in. That was a real bloody <laughs> shambles. It was a debacle. How but, do the Americans, uh, like, uh, not die, but, like, get, <laughs> get funeral? Obesity. How do you get funeraled? Um, I think it, everyone has different, it's because it's just a melting pot, everyone kind of does. So what's your thing. culture? What's your Bermuda? What's, what happens in Bermuda? Puerto Rico. Puerto, sorry, Puerto Rico. Sorry. But like, um, like what happens in, say, for example, God forbid, somebody in Bermuda, your family. they just lose the body. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh. <laughs> but like in, in your Puerto Rico, for example, somebody dies. You... <laughs> what? In my Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'll tell you what happens in my Puerto Rico. <laughs> All right. Um, in your family, if somebody passed away, yeah. talk us through the process of how do of you, grieving. how do you, what happens? Um, well, I've I've been lucky enough to only experience like one death in my family. Okay. It's common. There's more coming. <laughs> it's common. <laughs> and then, and um, now you're here. Oh, it's going to be so hard for me to get back. I know, I know. But no, in Puerto Rico, basically what we do is like there's a big plot for all your family and they just stack them on top of each other. In coffins? Yeah. So you, who buys the plot? Uh, well, my grandparents... And then you could have as many. You can walk over ten. So her, my grand, my grandmother's parents are there. Um, then my grandparents will be there. Then my aunts and uncles will be there, and so forth. And that's how you do it. All oh, right, okay. And they will be like into sort of like, is it's because they don't just put the coffins on top. You have like wee shelves, sort of, do you? and close the door. Do you have like? Is it IKEA? There's, there's a little. There's a little. There's a little dirt in between. Yeah, it's like a mausoleum. Is that what it's called? Well, there's a. Near are you the above mausoleum, ground or below ground? Below ground, but near oh, the right. mausoleum, there was all these like. Um, people buried, but because the water kept rising, half of them have gone into the ocean. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, my mother passed away. We bought a plot of land. Obviously, we bought a plot for her, but we my, we, we also bought the one next door. Yeah. So there's no one next to her. But we have it as well. Yeah, like, because we're like, give, give her a bit of space, you know? Yeah. See, that's also weird, though, too. I think whenever there's plots and then other people do other things, like meet new people, get married, have their own kids, and they're like, oh, you have to go to the plot. And people like, I kind of want to. You know, go here to go there. Like my mum, the mum will be like, "Oh no, don't let them take my eyes now." Don't let them take your eye. What do you do with the eyes? I don't know. Like you know, organ when you die, like nowadays, the organ donation guys are real. They're classic. You, you have, have to, to opt, opt out, out now. You're already opted in. You have to. You have to opt out, but yeah. you're automatically. Yeah. Or I, I would give my organs to the people. I'd give it yeah. to science. Yeah, yeah. But then you, there's going to be guys like I have. A, I had a friend who did some. I think he, he did like sports studies. So I don't know why he had to do this, but they had cadavers that they do like things with. And he would say like whenever he first met his now wife, um, like he would flirt with her. He took an arm of a corpse and put it up his sleeve and started stroking her hair with it. <laughs> and then he's like, I've got a present for you. And she put her hand out and he just put pubes. That's, rom oh, Dave. that's yeah. romance. But that's what happens when you donate your body to like uni. You're going to get weird dudes, well, don't you? Like that, flirting I, with them. I wrote in my will before I moved here, because I had wrote real just in case something happened, mm -hmm. that bury me here if I die. Are you serious? Yeah. Why? Because where I die is where I'm meant to die. Leave me there. Mm -hmm. I want to be scattered and thrown everywhere. Yeah? Yeah, like wild party. You know what they do? Some people do. They You can get made into friendship bracelets. Mm -hmm. And other more intimate things too, which some freaks do. Ooh. You can get made into cushions yeah. as well. And dildos. A cushion? They do yeah. that with your clothes, don't they? they make you into a <laughs> mm -hmm. cushion. To get all your old clothes and you can make them into duvets and cushions oh, so they smell like and all that. I back to like the bloody Holocaust there for a second. No, like, but that's what do they do, that. don't they? They can make dead pe people who pass away, you can get some of their old clothes, send them off somewhere and they send you back them as, as cushion Aww, covers. that's nice. Can you imagine your dog? Like, yeah, that's maybe so cross. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what would you like to be done with you whenever you, you pass? Well, I'd like to do a half and half. Okay. So half, Fast food theme is just carrying through. I'd like to do half of me to be cremated and the other half to go into the ground which half <laughs> so I don't know whether to split or go <laughs> into or ha like yeah well why don't you do the flip of that and get yourself scattered but don't get cremated because like can I ask you an honest question now and I, and I and I what do you think happens when you die I just think the lights are off really isn't it? do you Switched know what I think do you know what I think happens know. when you die right do you know when you go to sleep at night and you're really tired and you close your eyes and you don't and you don't have a dream Mm -hmm. And then you wake up and you feel like you've been asleep for five seconds, but you've been asleep for seven hours. That. That's wow. what I think it is. <laughs> I don't think there's a heaven. 
I don't think there's a hell. There's no big pearly gates. If there is, I've fucking some issues to pick up with people mm. that, you know what I mean? But I, that's what I think. Yeah. But what would your idea of heaven be? Like, if you were to die and you'd have everything exactly what you wanted, what would it be? Jesus, like... A lot of golf, always good weather. I golf, say. hang out with some people, obviously, see them. But would you, in heaven, would you Catch believe them. in heaven would be only people who are already dead? Or would you be like, fuck, I hope. Would you be allowed to, like... Because yeah. I think what happens is, and I don't think this is what happens, but would you think that, like, there's people in heaven looking down and they're picking, they're allowed, you're allowed to pick one person a year to come up to you? Oh, well, it's a good concept. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my mom would be like, well, I don't want to pick any of my kids because I want them to live long lives. Yeah. Because that, you know what I mean? So like, she'll say, look, I'll pick, pick a friend of mine. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice way of thinking. Like, oh, somebody's picked me. Yeah. Because they value me. Right. You know what I mean? But then you're like, but it's very hard. You know, Can I you get... imagine though, when you do die and like, you know, if people have been through horrendous and like lost maybe children or something. Oh God, yeah. And then you're up there with a big smile being like, I picked her. And you'd be like, you fucking son of a bitch. I'm not down here. <laughs> the fucking upset for my entire life. Yeah. Just be like, you're the chosen one. I'm yeah, just going to yeah. pick hot people. It's strange. It's, <laughs> you're just going to like up there like a big kid. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say hello to you, baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm sounding like Elvis. <laughs> I'm from yeah. Do you know one thing oh, I can't do? I can't do accents. Oh, can't whoa, even. shocker. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm really I'm, bad at accents. You're like. good at the Jamaican accent. <laughs> well, I was following him, like, you know, I'd be good oh. if I could follow him. But, like, yeah, I often wonder, like, I heard someone say, really, it'd be an awful racket that this whole religion thing is just a fraud when nothing happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's a scary thing. Do you, ever, do you ever worry about it? About death? Yeah. I know it's a bit morbid now we're a bit dark. I do apologize. I just, but curious, like, do you ever think about it? Because the older you get, you know, like, sometimes now, like, I often be driving home and I'd be thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, like, you know, am I halfway through now? Mm. You know, like, mm -hmm. am I halfway through? I think like, have I, you know, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'm scared, but I also think I've had enough experiences in life and enough things that should have, like, destroyed me. Like, have you had, have you had, have I, you had a scary near-death experience at all? Uh, not near death, but just, like, really shitty situations where I'm like, man, that should, I should be crazy, and I'm not. You know what I mean? So trauma. Yeah. Lots Childhood of stuff. stuff. Yeah. And so it's like, it's hard for me not to believe that there's a God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I've, you know, I have my sanity. <laughs> mm. yeah. See, that's it. there's some things happen to make you, and I suppose that's the the sort of ambiguity of it all, is it's yeah. way things happen to make you believe and go before. And then you go, there's maybe more than coincidence there for certain things. Yeah. But I, I just hope I die at a point where... My kids are old enough to have, I've seen them do things and then they'll be sort of ready to, you know. Like if I died now, I'd feel weak. Yeah. You know, I'd be up there being like, oh, fuck's sake, Dave. You knew you shouldn't have eaten that McDonald's breakfast, you <laughs> stupid bastard. Where did you get those cheesy chippy fries? You know, why did you? Yeah. The Fanta did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. I think once you, like, oh, it is definitely a bit fucking miserable to I'm sad. Here, okay, we'll move on. But you know what? The <laughs> celebrate about, life, guys. But I just think, yeah, you know, let's celebrate life. I get, but, I get, I get. Yeah, I just find it really interesting, you know, because like I don't watch the news anymore. Yeah. Because it's just horrendous. Like, and uh, I've said it to Julia, I was like, I can't watch the news anymore. Can you just turn it off, please? And she's like, and, uh, and I was like, no, no, I just want to, I'm not trying to be one of these positive wankers. Like, but I was just a bit like, no, no, we're just going to, we're going to just live our life. I'm talking to Chris Kent, right? Comedian oh, Chris Kent. I love him. Chris Kent has given up. Uh, Social media. In the internet. Mm -hmm. And he's literally doing everything via a map and he's got a Nokia phone. And I was with him at the weekend. He's four weeks in and he said, look, he's had a bit of hassle. He's he's going, he, like he went to Liverpool to do hot water, used no Google Maps, had to get a bus in the town, had to ask someone on the street. Mm -hmm. He really went back to whatever, the mid 90s. <laughs> like basically that's yeah. what he done, right? And I said, tell me the benefits so far. And he went, I didn't hear about Trump for three days. Uh. And I went, Okay, well, you know, the, the attempted assassination. I goes, how did that make... That was such a Trump hand as well. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear about <laughs> Trump for three days, right? And I said, how did that make you feel? He went, didn't make any difference. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah. What would it do? And he said he's, he's read a book, hasn't read a book for years. He's read a book. He's um, with the kids more. He's, you know, things like 
looking at the TV guide to see what's on telly mm-hmm. and kind of like, oh, I have to come back at seven for this because I can't watch it on iPlayer anytime. Oh. I have to, I have to really be present and really make a mm-hmm. plan and, and all that kind of stuff. And he's going to, he's good. I think he's doing it for eight weeks in total. He's doing it till the second week of September just to see how, how we can cope and how we can go back to not knowing everything all the time or one click away from getting information. Yeah. And I think maybe I'm going to, I've started to stop watching the news. I'm thinking about just doing Instagram on my laptop. Not doing what he's doing. Right. But the way he said it to me, I was like, hmm. he said to me, he'll go back to the internet, but he'll never go back to social media. His wife uploads all his videos. Oh, that's great. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? Like a cleanse? Like a fresh well, a break? We, when you put your phone down, it's better, isn't it, for a while? Like I think like even in bed time, I think putting your phone away at a certain time. Like I tried. Didn't taking something out then. Pardon? What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but like read a book, go to bed, you sleep better, don't you? And you, I don't know. And, and like Do you have I'm, a dim light in your bedroom? No. I just, it's like being in an abattoir. It's so have lights. you got like a big light, but have you have you got a light no, next to the bed? Not side light, yeah. So, so do you turn off the big light and then you get into the bed and you have the side light on and, yeah. you, and maybe you and the missus might scroll a bit, but do you turn around and then look at each other and be like, so what are we doing with the kids tomorrow? Is that the kind of chat mm, you have? No, she'll just read her book and then just fall asleep and I'll go around and turn her light off and lift her wee Kindle away from Aww, her. And do that's that so cute. Go, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just lean over her? <laughs> because it's far and I have wee short arms. You know, it's like a... Yeah. Does she always do really turn- short arms? Yeah, oh say so long weird hands, short lo- and very short legs, twenty eight inches. And um, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, and I think like if you do things like uh, last night, right? It started to annoy me recently because we had an argument about something, and you know when you have an argument and it's just you're just stressed out about things. It's like an accumulation of like my my daughter and her tonsils out, and she's not been sleeping. Well, how's she so been? How is she? She's all right now, but there, it was a, not a fun few days, and like we things were just. You know, you're, you're a lot of pressure. You're not sleeping. You're, and then when you have an argument, you say the things that have been maybe low key bu- bubbling under the surface. And I think Catherine's getting me about something. And I was like, I'm oh, sure you go and you watch your TikTok videos then, because it's a thing that'll wind me up if we're like watching something together. And yeah. she'll be sitting, and I'm like, you're not giving us any attention. Yeah. And like we started to watch. She's like, oh, stick a film on last last night, and I put on the Iron Claw. Oh, that's a good movie. But we hadn't seen it, and oh. she was like, what happened there? And I was like. Well, and I just went, well, you would have seen it if you were watching it. So it was on the TV, but you're well done, bloody, well done, Dave. You know, well and I done. just, and I think well when, done. You, when you put the it's phone it's down. About, it's like, about bringing, it, bringing the issues to the front. Yeah, but I think like yeah. what I'm going to do when, when the kids are older, I'm going to make a rule that like you put the phones away when you come to the dinner table. Do you know what I mean? That's so you have to be in we've, the moment. We've had a conversation about phone usage, Julie and I. <laughs> mm-hmm. We've had a conversation about phone usage. We're not overly bad, but... There comes a point where I say, look, we're embarking on a journey, Julie and I. We're engaged to be married and I really want to enjoy the, the journey. next the journey and uh, and the marriage. Yeah. So. And then death. Together. And then the death. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll do half and half, you know. Half and half. Oh, that'd be good if like, you put your top half or her bottom half and vice versa. <laughs> vice and then versa. you sort of half together, but then it'd be good fun. What would, what would you call that? Is that transgender... What I don't think so. That? I think no. it's um, half I just gender. Think it's is, it? is that a half gender? <laughs> I don't think there's gender really. I think it's just weird. <laughs> it's, just it's, a bit, it's a bit Jeffrey Dahmer, isn't it? You know who did that? Do you remember your man in the film The Last King of Scotland? Did he? I mean, um, he I don't do watch films like as a like punishment films, like. for people. He would, he would send his dudes. I mean, I think I don't know the exact terms, but he'd swap arms and legs of people. It's like yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of punishment. And then, as punishment, like. yeah, you'd be like, "Hey, go! You have weak those that. Try walking on your hands, brother. Yeah, puts, try his, puts his legs where his arms are. Yeah, and puts his hands where his but legs see, should when, be. When you're that powerful, that's a bit of banter, isn't it? You're like, we'll see what I've done now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, like, giddy, what do you took like? his head off and put his head in his arse. Yeah. Oh, he's a really a dickhead now. Just put his like, so he's shitting out of his arse when it's going into his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose he's a wee bit like uh, a Picasso, isn't he? Like a body Picasso, like no. a mixture yeah. of doc- no. you're, you're the body art guy or the body work guy, or um, what's he called? Um, Dr. Gunther von Hagens mixed with Picasso. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember, um, <laughs> uh, did you ever hear of a guy called Fred West? No. Oh. Fred's a, no, Fred's a lovely fella. Right. Family man. Family man. I feel like you guys are lying to me. No, no, he, <laughs> he no, loved no, he was family. family man. He's he like loved, a Chris he, Benoit. <laughs> you should, 
No, Chris Benoit didn't love his family, but Fred West did love his family did too his much. Family. They fact, loved his family, wanted yeah. him close all the time. Yeah. So what he did was um, he had a wife who also loved her. Uh, Rosemary. Yeah, Rosemary. Rose. Fred and Rosemary. Rose. Fred and um, Rose West. Yeah, they had... <laughs> loving couple now. Yeah, they had kids. And then didn't they do... They, they, had, they were lodge, they, lodgers. Yeah, they may or may not have. Uh, also made love to their kids. And, oh, what? Um, it's very American. Yeah, right? it's, it is so like, <laughs> this is such an American tale that you'll be like, I was born. Did it really happen here, in Yorkshire? It was a big deal. And then they like killed some of their kids and then they killed them. Buried them under the patio. Buried like. them under the patio. Yeah. And so he then killed himself in prison and she's still in prison in yeah. Wakefield in North Yorkshire. Yeah. Rosemary, she runs the wing apparently and very good at Monopoly. Yeah. That's what they're saying in the papers. Yeah, I'm, ne- I'm never getting married. I'm never having children. Yeah. Well, you might need to if your visa is rejected. Yeah. Uh, and if I do, I'll marry. What's your backup plan if it gets James rejected? James McCagney. I'm marrying James McCagney. That's going to be fun. Can we all go? <laughs> um, oh, that would you be can't great. Make it, but everybody else. <laughs> but I Why can't I make it? I'm gigging. Fun. I'm going to put you on the on the list as Pandrew Ryan. Pandrew, what? A little different. Close, uh, close enough to your name, but yeah. Pandrew Ryan, the pansexual. <laughs> what is a pansexual? You someone guys likes to have sex with pans. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's someone who is just attracted to everything. everything. What they're attracted to. Yeah. yeah. Like all adults, all all people. Is, are, are pansexuals like attracted to like vibe? Aren't they? Atta- no, they're attracted to intelligence. I don't. I don't know. Not specifically I, I, for not pansexuals. Specifically, pansexuals I, just are attracted to what they're attracted just to. Free love them. Yeah. Like no. there's no like... They're not gay defined. or straight. They just like, if you're... It to, could can be a I... man, it could be a woman. It's about, you know... So just... those people... So they're bisexual. Like... No. Oh, they could marry the roller coasters. Are they pansexual? Okay, so let me explain. I, I, I'm not trying to... I want to be respectful here. So a bisexual is somebody that is attracted to male and female. Correct. And a pansexual is somebody that's attracted to... Male, female, gender. they, them, trans, like... Like oh like right! Oh, my apologies. Right, I didn't. Yeah. Okay, so bisexual would not be attracted to to a transgender person. They might be. Are no bisexual? I, I'm. Not specifically. It's just like guys, use of Google. Find out, please. I'm. I don't know where I'm speaking right or whatever, but I think <laughs> pansexual <laughs> is just gender doesn't really or sex doesn't come in to for them. It's just whoever. They can. They're just attracted so, to and people. A desperate. <laughs> she said, it doesn't Jasmine matter what Sierra. they are. Whoever, I'll do whatever's going. So how do you be? Are you okay? Pansexual. Bisexual. I have a friend who's heterosexual, but has been in a long term relationship with a man, and he'd be like, "Well, if I, we split up, I'd still go with girls again." But I'd be a bisexual, and he's like, "Nah, I just love this guy." Oh wow! So yeah. Yeah, pansexuality is sexual, romantic, or emotional attraction towards people of all genders. Regardless of their sex or gender identity, pansexual may refer to themselves as gender blind, asserting that gender and sex are not determinant factors in their romantic or sexual attraction to others. Yeah, backup plan will be McKegney or Butler. I call it a day. I oh. think McKegney's your best bet yeah, there. I'd say yeah. so. Yeah. McKegney, be good. McKegney, 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 are you do registry office? No, you stay a proper wedding. All right, yeah. and the guy, pl- I plan it. You gonna walk me down yeah. the aisle? I'll walk and we could do st- yes, it'd be I the best speeches ever. <laughs> when James met Jasmine, we knew it was love at the, for the right amount of money <laughs> <laughs> to get the visa. But you know what? I think that would be a hell of a party, though, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, we Imagine. yeah. Look, me, me and McKinney can party. There's a theory going around that um, you're just a con artist, John. That I'm a con artist. Just, yeah, you're a con artist, and that it's going to that. Uh, we're going to find out in the papers later on that you just go from like country to country country to country <laughs> <laughs> doing oh, fundraisers uh, I, you know what I mean next thing you're going to be like oh I'm a comedian from Belgium and I'm living <laughs> I just love the Belgian comedy community just, you know, just all these different I love this culture I'm yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a great. I should have thought of that. Yeah. yeah, well, when do you find out about your immigration status? Anytime in the next eight to ten weeks. Eight, eight. Do you find out via email, via post, via, via... email? Uh-huh. And there's this guy who is asks, it like congratulations, or is it like it's like you you click into this and it's like all your your futures in this oh, one uh-huh. email, and I'm like dying. <laughs> and this guy messaged me. He's like, "Do you mind if I document this?" And I was like, "Sure." I, c- can you cope if it's a no? Yeah, <laughs> because. You'll be documenting this yeah. suicide. Oh, no. <laughs> Jasmine, we really hope 
you get deported. <laughs> uh, no, Jasmine, listen, we're absolutely uh, a massive uh, asset to comedy and uh, make sure that you we, we get this passed and you stay in this country. Okay? And we hope we give America McCann, Aaron McCann, Aye. we get you as a trade. Perfect deal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we'll hopefully do that. Dave, thanks for coming in and catching up with us it's this week. It's a pleasure. Week. Thanks for having me. This was, a, this was a, an emotional roller coaster. This this Can I just say, yeah. this was a very up and down podcast. I, 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 uh, I don't know Very light, very entertaining, like, and then took a dark twist. Yeah. But that's what we do here at Cork in the North. We may have lost the All-Ireland <laughs> final, but we have won the heart and mind of the people. Now, I'm away at the Edinburgh Festival. I'll be back uh, in a week and a half. But we will have uh, different people covering the podcast next oh, week. Oh, who's, who's filling in? Uh, we don't know yet. Um, so we'll figure that out so uh, basically also as well remember the live show is just about sold out still some tickets left and we got tickets come see me and tour all links below don't forget to die in pub you guys have been great hope you enjoyed this one very up very down very left very right but the most important thing is Jasmine stays in the country yes <laughs> <laughs>